As the Money Burns is an original podcast by Nikki Woodard. Based on historical research, this is a deep exploration into what happened to a set of actual heirs and heiresses to some of America's most famous fortunes when the Great Depression hit. Each episode has three primary sections. Section 1 is a narrative story. Section 2 goes deeper into the historical facts. Section 3 focuses on contemporary, emotional, and personal connections. Story Recap Racial tensions in Hawaii erupt into a murder trial, and a former millionaire writes a bad check, then is sentenced to hard labor at a workhouse. Now back to As the Money Burns, Ransom or Reward. The most famous kidnapping case of all time has a long-reaching impact. Will the owner of a cursed jewel become another victim? Section 1, Story. The world celebrates a fantastical feat. Preparing for over a year, a former airmail pilot goes from obscurity to the biggest instant celebrity of almost all time. Issues with lacking bigger sponsorship means he himself puts $2,000, about $34,000 in 2023, of his own hard-earned money into his historic flight. From May 20th to 21st, 1927, Charles Lindbergh flies the spirit of St. Louis from New York to Paris. The harrowing and exhaustive journey test endurance and science. The lack of sleep the night before, rain delays, a muddy runway, complications with visibility due to fog, faulty gadgets forces reliance only on a compass for directions. Star navigation, too disorienting. Fighting off hallucinations, dozing off to barely jerk awake back into safety. Icing on the wings, storm clouds, his only personal items, five sandwiches and some water. Anticipation and excitement travel around the world. The first solo nonstop transatlantic flight took 33 hours and 29 minutes. He circles the Eiffel Tower before landing. Paris highways fill with automobiles racing to Le Berger Aerodrome Airfield. Upon landing, Lindbergh is greeted by a crowd of 150,000 storming the field. In jubilation, they shake the plane more frightening than during the flight and pull him from his aircraft with his feet never touching the ground for over 30 minutes as he has passed from person to person. Literally, overnight, the previous unknown Lindbergh becomes an international sensation, global fame on an unprecedented scale. He immediately embarks on a mini European tour celebrating his achievement with a borrowed suit. Yet, he didn't even carry any luggage to keep fuel reserves safer. Lindbergh wants to do a world tour flying via the Spirit of St. Louis, but President Coolidge insists on a return. Aboard the ocean cruiser Memphis for the hero in the plane safety. Upon return to New York, Lindbergh receives a ticker tape parade along Broadway with a crowd of four million and a banquet at the original Waldorf Astoria Hotel in June 1927. Lindbergh is deluged with offers totaling and worth over five million dollars, nearly 86 million today. Even William Randolph Hearst offers 500,000. That's 8.6 million in 2023, plus 10% of the gross for Lindbergh to star in an aviation movie co-starring Hearst's mistress, Marion Davies. On a December 1927 tour in Mexico with humorous Will Rogers, Lindbergh meets the U.S. Ambassador to Mexico, Dwight Morrow, and his daughter, heiress Anne Morrow. Lindbergh and Anne marry in May 1929. Anne earns her pilot license in March 1930 and herself makes a solo flight. She is the first American woman to earn a first-class glider pilot's license. She partakes in some of her husband's adventures, exploring and chartering air routes between the continents. She is also a writer of meritable note in her own right. Their first child and son, Charles Lindbergh Jr., is born on June 22, 1930, sharing a birthday with his mother. Their little one is referred as Charlie, and the press dubs him the Eaglet after Lindbergh's nickname, the Lone Eagle. Within hours of his birth, Charlie is immediately celebrated with a song published about him. 
the world's most famous baby is endlessly documented. Before the historic flight, Limber came from a more modest upbringing. Of course, he has made a fortune since, but nothing compared to his wife's family. Her father, Dwight Morrow, is a politician and longtime partner of J.P. Morgan Company and is estimated to be worth $19 million, a staggering $414.9 million in 2023 when he suddenly dies of a heart attack in October 1931, while the Lindbergh couple is on tour in China. The Lindbergh's ongoing popularity comes with a burden of privacy. The couple admit to using disguises to avoid attention. In 1931, they build a home in Hopewell, New Jersey, on a 550-acre lot isolated and removed from intrusion. But their newly built home receives plenty of press. Unfortunately, more fame descends the family, but this time, it is for a tragedy. Tuesday, March 1st, 1932. Around 1 p.m., Scottish nurse Betty Gow arrives at Hopewell to help with the 20-month-old toddler who has been suffering a cold, thus the family staying later at their weekend residence. By 7.30 p.m., Nurse Gow and Anne secure the baby for the night. They close two of the three shuttered windows, but the third is jammed and the women are not strong enough to force it closed. At 8.25 p.m., Anne joins Lindbergh for dinner. He arrives late that evening after missing another planned event at the new Waldorf Astoria. They hear a clashing noise outside, but think not much of it as a late winter storm rages on. 10 p.m., Nurse Gal checks on the baby but doesn't hear him breathing in the dark room, so goes over to check and finds the bed empty. Upon realizing he is not with his mother as she emerges from her bath, the nurse then checks to see if Charlie is with his father, who might be playing a joke on them. Alarm, Lindbergh storms into the room, then rushes out, ignoring an envelope near the windowsill. Immediately, Lindbergh grabs his rifle and goes on a hunt around the premises. 10.20 p.m., the sheriff is alerted. Within an hour, the authorities are on site. They search for evidence, including fingerprints. Two sets of footprints are discovered. One set leads to an oddly shaped ladder nearby the baby's window. Inside, next to the windowsill, the poorly written ransom note says not to get the police or any publicity involved and requests $50,000, the equivalent of $1.09 million in 2023. As if that is really going to happen. Already within less than two hours, press airwaves announce the crime and local reporters gather. Wednesday, March 2nd, 1932. By 3 a.m., the local tavern and hotel fill with those seeking more information. By morning, newspapers splash the story across the nation. A crowd swarms the house, ready to aid in a search party, but unfortunately destroying evidence like the footprints. Reporters gather in the garage, awaiting more details and news breaks. Almost four months pregnant with her second child, Anne looks out the window watching the commotion below, wondering where her firstborn might be and if the kidnappers will care for him properly. The baby's medication and diet are released in the press as instructions for the kidnappers. Lindbergh suspects an organized crime ring is behind the abduction, he plans to fly over the area and scout bootlegger camps for inspection. Quickly, Lindbergh concedes in the press he is willing to pay any ransom to get his son back. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover gets involved as well as future CIA head William Bill Donovan and New Jersey Superintendent of Police Herbert Norman Schwarzkopf Sr. Yep, the Gulf War General's daddy, Jr. is born in 1934. Thursday, March 3rd, 1932. The case draws so much attention that those wishing to play hero for a hero or aid in any possible manner offer their assistance and comments. It seems like almost everyone is ready to pounce in on the action. From his Cook County jail cell still waiting appeal on his 11-year sentence for tax evasion, mafia crime boss Al Capone offers a $10,000 reward, or $218,000 in 2023, for any information leading to the child's recovery. Capone explains, It's the most outrageous thing I ever heard. He further offers, If I were out of jail, I could be real assistance. 
The House Judiciary Committee convenes in Washington to propose legislation making kidnapping a federal crime and felony if the victim is transported across state lines. The future Federal Kidnapping Act of 1932, also known as the Lindbergh Law. Former FBI agent turned private investigator with plenty of underground connections, Gaston Means calls up a local judge in Washington, D.C., offering assistance and a potential connection to the crime. Weeks before, a mysterious Feldman approached Gaston about a big kidnapping about to take place. The judge advises that Gaston seek Lindbergh's permission before involvement. Friday, March 4, 1932. At her home in Washington, Hope Diamond owner Evelyn Wash McLean stares at the news headlines. She's had plenty of her own recently due to her divorce battle with her soon-to-be ex-husband, Edward Ned McLean, owner of the Washington Post, who is currently abroad with his mistress, Rose Doris, the sister of Hearst's mistress, Marion Davies. Evelyn has already lost one young son in a car accident, and more recently her mother in February 1932. Evelyn fears a similar fate for her surviving children. Compelled to do something and at the urging of another friend, Evelyn phones Gaston Means, despite their having previous bad blood over an earlier matter. Obviously, already desiring involvement, Gaston jumps in and offers to contact the kidnappers and recover the baby. Saturday, March 5th, 1932. Evelyn contacts Lindbergh along with the aid of Captain Land, a naval officer and Lindbergh's cousin. After meeting Gaston, Land heads out to Hopewell, New Jersey to get Lindbergh's permission. It is agreed that Evelyn and Land will act as liaisons with Gaston to the underworld and the kidnappers. Code names, Evelyn is number 11, Gaston number 27, Land number 9, and a few others in the mix, including a Catholic priest, who will handle the delivery of the baby. Sunday, March 6, 1932. Despite a snowy blizzard and the car getting stuck in snow, Gaston with his wife, Julie Means, meet up with Evelyn at Evelyn's Fairview home, a remote suburb location outside of Washington, D.C., preferred by the kidnappers who watch from afar. There, Gaston states with the increased publicity, the ransom has doubled to 100000 nearly $2.18 million in 2023. Evelyn requests an additional day to acquire the funds. Monday, March 7, 1932. Evelyn takes out a short-term mortgage on her home on Oxford Block. That evening, in a brown carton box about 18 square inches and 6 inches deep, tied with grocery twine, Evelyn hands over to Gaston the $100,000 ransom. He leaves with a promise and a plan in place. Each day, Evelyn remains at Fairview, staring out the window. Now, the long, agonizing wait begins. Section 2, History and Historiography The Lindbergh baby kidnapping is most likely the greatest crime of the century. Even when placed against other heinous 20th century singular crimes, it ranks near the top due to its worldwide impact. It is not only the event that occurred, but to whom and how long for the resolution which to this day feels for some conspiracy theorists, seems circumspect and questionable enough to debate if it is truly solved. Though we know the result of this event, I will present the various elements within the timeline of our story to see its impact on those who feared similar incidents. Kidnapping is definitely not a new crime, but by the 1930s in America, it increased significantly in both attempts and actual occurrences and takes an even darker turn. Kidnapping has long been a part of history, with records going far into the past. Cilician pirates abduct both Roman politician and orator Marcus Antonius' daughter, Antonina, in 99 BC, and later a young Julius Caesar on his way to study in Rhodes in 75 BC. Both are released upon payment of their ransoms. Julius insisted they double his price, then later make sure his abductors are apprehended and crucified. 
Throughout time, more kidnappings occur, and the most noted ones have political significance or are the result of unsafe travels. Kidnapping is also used as a method to force forbidden, unwanted, or undesirable marriages. And, of course, there are the mass abductions related to the slave trade. However, for context and brevity, this episode focuses on individual persons taken for money or ransom, and even more so children and especially progeny of the wealthy or celebrities. Prior to the 1920s, modern kidnappings are considered in the realm of Chinese brigands and river pirates, the mafia in Sicily, and Mexican bandits. In other words, circumstantial and geographically based risk far removed from the regular person. During Prohibition and the Great Depression, kidnapping stories first involved gangsters and their rivals. Over time, the desired targets morph into the wealthy. Of course, money always makes someone a potential target, but the dire circumstances of the Great Depression pushes desperation into action. News runs across the nation with several recent sensational abductions of well-known persons. Now, in early 1932, reportedly over 2,000 people have been abducted over the last couple of years, 300 of those in the New York area. For Chicago, the number is assumed to be 400 between 1930 and 1931. Much like today, the high-profile nature of the Lindbergh baby kidnapping brings out many others to comment or offer assistance. In addition to Al Capone and other crime figures, former kidnapper-turned-lecturer Pat Crow offers to advise Lindbergh on getting his son back. The number one point? Pay the ransom, not a reward. Back in 1900, Crow kidnapped 15-year-old Edward Cudahy Jr. His father owns Cudahy Packing Company in the Omaha Stockyards. In the ransom note, Crow threatens to blind and disfigure his captive with acid if the ransom goes unpaid. Father Cudahy pays the $25,000 ransom, $890,000 in 2023, and receives criticism from the San Francisco Examiner newspaper for encouraging criminal behavior. Crow will be caught after gold certificates used in the ransom are spent and traced back to him. During our story's event, Crow is a high-profile lecturer touring the country and considered a modern-day Robin Hood. By the way, Crow will die near penniless in 1938. Also in the above case, that ransom note alludes to another famous kidnapping. Four-year-old Charlie Ross in July 1874, Philadelphia. Charlie Ross is the first American kidnapping for ransom to receive widespread coverage. His father, Christian Ross, listens to the pleas, refuses to pay the ransom, and hires Pinkerton detectives. The kidnappers are likely killed after a skirmish while robbing a judge's home. Their bodies are identified by five-year-old Walter Ross, the older brother who witnessed the abduction. Charlie Ross is never found, though there are several pretenders claiming to be him that surfaced around 1934, over 60 years later. Two other child abductions receive attention in the 1920s. In 1924, 14-year-old Bobby Franks is kidnapped and murdered in Chicago's Hyde Park. His abductors are teenagers and first-known thrill killers Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, two bright students who wanted to commit the perfect murder but got caught. Their famous defense attorney, Clarence Darrow, wins them life without parole instead of death sentences. In 1927, Los Angeles, the kidnapping and brutal murder of 12-year-old Marion Parker catches the nation's attention. A man withdraws her from school, claiming her banker father is hurt. Her abductor, William Hickman, is caught during his flight to Oregon using the $20 gold certificates paid as part of the ransom. Hickman attempts to plead insanity, called under the direction of supernatural deity, Providence, but will later tell a reporter he wants as much press attention as Leopold and Loeb. Hickman's likely motive is revenge for Marion's father testifying against Hickman on a theft and forgery case. Hickman is hanged in San Quentin in 1928 and will become a prototype for Anne Rand's protagonist, Danny Renahan, in her unfinished novel, The Little Street. In August 1931, New York, Charles Marvin Rosenthal is kidnapped and returned upon his mother paying his $50,000 ransom. In February 1932, Rosenthal marries shortly around the same time as tennis sensation Frank Shields. Certain weddings will notably provide security. Hollywood has several threats. Recently, a plot to kidnap Mary Pickford for $250,000 ransom 
or 5.5 million in 2023, is thwarted by private detectives. Other plots uncovered include as targets the former Divani princess and silent screen star Pola Negri, other movie stars, and even nearby Hollywood resident and grandson of oil tycoon Edward Doheny. Chicago goes on alert to the underworld's rising kidnapping racket after 50-year-old John Lynch is kidnapped and released a week later after the 175000 of his 250000 ransom is paid in August 1931. A publisher and a partner at the Daily Racing Forum, Lynch declares he will aid in catching and convicting his abductors. Allegedly, the ransom is handed to liaison Al Capone. Kidnapping gangs become a major concern. In 1931, 49 people pay ransoms, mostly associates of bootlegging, gambling, hijacking, and other criminal associations. As kidnapping becomes a lucrative industry for gangdom, the menace arises across the nation, one overwhelming to local and state officials. The Federal Kidnapping Act of 1932 passes in June, also referred as the Lindbergh Law. In 1934, amendments provide exception for parents abducting their children while adding capital punishment in cases where the victim is not released unharmed. Other states will add little Lindbergh laws for acts that do not cross state lines. But the trend only continues. In 1963, Old Blue Eyes' son, Frank Sinatra Jr., is kidnapped and released days later after the 240000 ransom is paid, $2.3 million in 2023. In contrast, when John Paul Getty III is kidnapped in 1973 Italy, his grandfather, J. Paul Getty, refuses to pay the ransom until his grandson, Severed Ear, is sent to a newspaper. Granddaughter of newspaper magnet William Randolph Hearst, Patty Hearst, is kidnapped by the Symbionese Liberation Army in February 1974, just a few weeks shy of her 20th birthday. Ransom demands a release of two SLA members from police custody and the Hearst family distributing food to the poor. Patty's involvement in a deadly bank robbery and a fugitive status result in her 1975 arrest and trial. Patty's case is studied for Stockholm Syndrome and brainwashing. President Jimmy Carter commutes her sentence and later President Bill Clinton pardons her. Large amounts of money always come with danger and growing desperate times force the wealthy to further increase security measures. Section 3, Contemporary and Personal Relevance The 1996 film Ransom, directed by Ron Howard, stars Mel Gibson as a bereaved and angry father fighting to get his son back. The most memorable scene is when Mel's character on live television pours $2 million on the table, the requested ransom, and instead offers it as a reward and bounty for the kidnappers, setting off a chain of antagonistic and violent events. In the end, Mel luckily gets his child back. However, that method would likely guarantee resulting in the least desirable outcome. That fictional scenario highlights kidnapping for monetary reasons, but what happens for those whose children have no other information? The popular and long-running show America's Most Wanted lasts 24 seasons from 1988 to 2011. It is revived in 2021. The original host, John Walsh, became an advocate after his son, Adam Walsh's abduction and murder in 1981. John had offered a $100,000 reward, $330,000 today, for his son's return and had found the attempted recovery an abysmal process. Over the more than 1,000 episodes, the show helps return dozens of missing children and capture over 1,400 murderers, fugitives, and wanted criminals. It even features two other well-known abductions, J.C. Lee Dugard and Elizabeth Smart. Recovery of kidnapped children can be both affirming and disheartening. Steven Stainer resurfaces after seven years to save another kidnapped boy, Timothy, Timmy White, in 1980. At the time, Stainer is considered the longest safe recovery. However, Stainer's story is complicated decades later when his eldest brother, Carrie Stainer, is convicted of kidnapping and serial murder. Elizabeth Smart is rescued after nine months between 2002 to 2003, and J.C. Lee Dugard with her two children is rescued from her captors after nearly 18 years, from 1991 to 2009. 
all those cases involve ulterior motives beyond money, but it is the victim's young age which catches national and international attention. Their safe returns lauded in contrast to the bleak realities of their captivities. Other sensational child cases are not so lucky. Two of the most profound and unsolved cases are John Benet Ramsey in 1996 and Madeline McCann in 2007. The latter has never been found, and a recent pretender brings her story back into the light now 15 years later. Over the last decade or two, there has been a rise in international kidnappings. Many tales of Americans traveling abroad kidnapped and held at ransom. The rise of Uber encouraged as a better and safer manner of travel as the digital record is considered a deterrent versus a random undocumented taxi in more dangerous countries. The insane and unrealistic ransom amounts highlight the disparities between colliding worlds and economic realities. Recently in Los Angeles, even pre-pandemic, there has been a rise in dog napping. Areas servicing wealthy or celebrity clientele find pups missing only later to be returned after paying a ransom. In February 2021, Lady Gaga's two French bulldogs, Koji and Gustav, are taken after her dog walker is shot in the chest. Other pets are chosen for their value on the black market, particularly desirable specialty breeds like French bulldogs, Pomeranians, and Golden Doodles. Some things read like movie plots, and of course, movies and television do refer to both real and fictional cases. Former FBI agent Gaston Means appears in season three and four of HBO's Boardwalk Empire, portrayed by Stephen Root. For that show, Gaston's storyline deals with Prohibition-era politicos and gangsters. Let's just say he's a pretty slippery fellow. Already, our heirs and heiresses have increased their security as the Great Depression gets darker. But with the Lindbergh kidnapping, the threat becomes more realistic and deadlier in nature. Our tales are far from over, and there are many twists, turns, and connections to follow, and plenty more threats to come. March 13, 2023 is the 130th anniversary of the original Waldorf Hotel opening, the beginning of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel Empire. Come check out my two webinars on the Waldorf Astoria Hotels returning to New York Adventure Club. Part 1 on Monday, March 13, 2023, and Part 2 on Monday, December 20th, 2023, at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. Topics include plenty of presidents, royalty, celebrities, underworld figures, and yes, even Lindbergh's Banquet. Web links are available at www.nyadventureclub.com and the news and events section at asthemoneyburns.com. The fee is $10 each, live with one-week access after. If you enjoy As the Money Burns, then please share, like, and subscribe. Next, when we return to As the Money Burns, secrets are unleashed when two wealthy industrialists find themselves in different dire straits, only to make the same permanent fatal decision. Until then. As the Money Burns is an original podcast written, produced, and voiced by Nikki Water based on historical research. Archival music has been provided by Past Perfect Vintage Music. Check out their website at www.pastperfect.com. Please come visit us at As the Money Burns via Good Pods, Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Transcripts, timeline, episode guide, and character bios are available at asthemoneyburns.com.